guys, what's in this case is a game changer. As you know, I really like my Glide Gear Leo's iPhone stabilizer. This thing is great if I ever have to shoot stuff on my phone. And so every night before I went to bed, I would pray to the Glide Gear gods to make a gimbal that could hold my DSLR camera. Glide Gear heard my prayers. Introducing. <laughs> Damn it. Introducing the incredible Durano's three axis gimbal for DSLR sized cameras. So included in this nifty little carrying case here, you have the Durano's gimbal itself, two sets of batteries, thank you Glide Gear, the grip handle, a USB cable, a battery charger, and little lens mounts to hold your camera onto the base plate. So this thing is super easy to set up and balance. We're gonna do it right now and then we're gonna go shoot with it. Get ready for the quality loss because we're switching to iPhone in three, two, one, ooh. All right guys, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is charge your batteries, and once they are charged, drop them into the handle like so, positive side facing up, and then we are going to screw it into the bottom of the gimbal like this. Wonderful. Next thing we're gonna do is screw our camera into the base plate. So you're gonna want the mechanics on the right and the camera base plate on the left, and you're just gonna pop your camera right up onto the base plate like so, and screw it in with the attached camera base plate screw. So if you're using a camera like mine, I have the Sony a6300 with the kit lens on here right now. It has a lens that actually extends out of the camera when you power the camera on. So make sure that your camera is on if you have one of these lenses so the weight distribution of the camera is actually correct before we manually balance. That is important. Step one, tilt balance. Using this little screw right on the front first. If you put your hand on the horizontal arm in the back, you're gonna wanna be able to balance the camera with the lens facing down so that it doesn't roll or move or do anything. So this is perfect. So if you need to adjust this, just loosen this screw and this whole base plate slides up and down. So you're gonna wanna get it so that the camera manually balances with the lens facing down. Step two, adjusting the camera base plate screw. Pretty self-explanatory. The camera will slide forward and backwards depending and your camera will swing if it's uneven in weight. So what you're looking for is for the camera to actually balance horizontally without you having to do anything to it. Just like that. Yeah. <coughs> Step three, roll access. This little screw right here on top. As you can see, if I let the camera go, it just falls, right? That's not good. So what we wanna do is we wanna loosen this roll adjustment screw and we just wanna push until the camera balances horizontally without falling over. Right there is about good. So we'll tighten that screw, make sure that everything is sitting pretty, and check that out. I don't have any power running to the gimbal right now, and this thing is basically perfectly balanced. Step four is the pan access, which is this screw right here on the side. As you can see, I can move the unit forwards and backwards. Basically, what I found to be a good test is if you put it on a desk, you're gonna wanna be able to have it sit without tilting forward or backwards off the desk. Obviously, you don't wanna drop your gimbal. So once it's standing upright without falling over, tighten that screw and you guys are ready to rock and roll. That literally took no time at all. It is perfectly balanced without any power running to the gimbal. And it's important that you get it as close to perfect as possible. So then that way your gimbal doesn't have to work as hard to keep your camera stable, pro tip. So right here on the gimbal handle, I have an on off button and I have a little joystick here. So I'm just gonna hold the on off button for about two seconds. And the gimbal should power on, very nice, look at that. Feels nice and steady, doesn't feel off balance, feels really great in my hand. And uh, I think we're ready to rock and roll. So this thing has two basic modes. The first mode is a follow mode, where if I turn my wrist, you'll actually see the camera is rotating in the way that my wrist is turning. And the second mode is if I push the joystick in once, the camera will lock onto a focus point and no matter how much I move my wrist, the camera's gonna stay stable and looking straight forward. The other cool feature about this gimbal is the inverted mode. If I double tap the joystick, it will actually let me use the gimbal inverted. And you can get some really cool camera moves with this. If you wanna like kind of dolly along the ground and then pull up like a cool jib shot. It looks really super spectacular. You can use both modes while it's inverted and this is a really cool feature. Also, if you push and hold the joystick in for about a second, it goes into standby mode. So you can see I can kind of turn this around. There's actually no uh, power running to the gimbal right now. And you push and hold for one more second and now we are back in action. All right, now that we're all balanced and ready, I'm gonna go outside and shoot a little mini movie only using the gimbal so you can see how incredible the footage looks. Let's do it.
closing on the crashing waves, fading down to black. Fading up from black, a sweaty knot Ian Sands is back from his bike ride, here to tell you about the Toronto's three-axis gimbal scene. All right, you saw for yourself how smooth the footage is. Comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. I give this thing a solid, solid 9.5 out of 10. Battery life, 10. Build quality, 10. Comfortability, 10. Ease of use, 10. Accuracy, 9.5, which I don't even know why I'm giving it a 9.5. I literally had to redo two shots while I was at the pier because as I was coming up, the gimbal kind of moved a little bit, so I just had to redo it. It's not that big of a deal. It was still really smooth. <laughs> All right, I'll just give it a 10 out of 10. Why not? Oh, and it added bonus. It comes with this thing called the hook, which is basically a double-handed rig that you screw the gimbal right into the top of like this, and it allows you to use the gimbal using two hands. You throw it over your neck like so, you got the gimbal up here, and then it also has two accessory ports so you can mount on an external light or an external monitor or like a cup holder so you can hold your water. It also comes with a base plate that you slide right in the bottom so you can stick this thing on a tripod and there you go. All in all, for what you're getting, you cannot beat the price of this thing. Everything included, 800 bucks from Glide Gear. I urge you to go check out glidegear.net. Check out all the products that they have on the website. Everything is really well built and everything is really reasonably priced. So whether you're just starting out or you've been doing this a while and you need a new piece of gear, go check out glidegear.net and tell them your boy Naughty and Sans sent you. I don't actually get like royalties or anything, but you can still tell them, that'd be cool. So what are you gonna do right now? Number one, go check out the Geranos 3X's gimbal from Glide Gear for DSLR size cameras. Then put one in your shopping cart, put in the credit card information and click ship. If you have a Leo stabilizer, you need to get the big brother version. Even if you don't, the results speak for themselves. And the second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on anything. None of my reviews, none of my tutorials, nothing. Get to look at this mug all day long. Also follow me on social media, at Naughty and Sans, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. The whole Instagram, Snapchat thing, not really sure what's going on right now, not really sure which one I'm gonna use. Uh, anyways, subscribe. Until you do, you hit this vape. <laughs> Not good after a long bike ride.